What does it actually mean for Messiah to be diverse? Hmm. So I think it's, there's two levels. Mm -hmm. And maybe this might be a generalization, mm -hmm. but um, especially in America where there's a lot of talk about race and um, then how do we distinguish between race and ethnicity? Mm -hmm. And then where does diversity fit in there? So I think just politically, socially as constructs, you know, created by human beings, we tend to focus on race and the different race uh, assumptions, stereotypes, and whatnot associated on race based on skin color or appearance a lot, and that's created a lot of tension. But underneath that, I feel like there's a diversity that is waiting to be tapped into. Mm -hmm. And while like ethnic diversity and differences are super important because where you come from, how your culture and traditions inform you as a human being, you know, they play a huge role in forming your identity, and ethnicity is a big part in that. But at the same time, like getting to know people here, making friends of you know different races of uh, local, like uh, the white Americans, mm -hmm. or even you know the um, students of minority who are American, you know their their views are so different because of ethnicity. But then when you really strip all of that down, and this is not to whitewash or kind of like n uh, negate the importance of ethnic diversity. Mm -hmm. But everyone has a story that people, you wouldn't know unless you start talking to them, unless you start having conversations, and s unless you start like fellowshipping, mm -hmm. you know? And like being in a Christian campus, I feel like that's something that we don't um, utilize as much in the spirit of getting to know our neighbor, mm -hmm. in, in uh, loving one another in that way. And you know, like my past years in RA, I've learned so much um, from my residents who mm -hmm. are from the area, who have been in Pennsylvania their whole life, mm -hmm. and they've shared their stories and testimonies with me that I would never have been able to know just from looking the way they look mm -hmm. or assuming from just their appearance or, or race. Mm -hmm. So um, diversity is acknowledging then that those experiences, mm -hmm. acknowledging the, the ethnicity that, that drives those experiences, the history associated with the ethnicity, mm -hmm. as well as personal experiences from environment and nurture, mm -hmm. and then just uh, coming face to face and say like, you know, you are a beloved human being and mm -hmm. child of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and all that and more like, and it, just to add to that, um, just coming out, coming into each conversation and interaction with a spirit of wanting to learn, mm -hmm. uh, with the mentality of you, you are a unique person and mm -hmm. you have individual experiences that are that are different than mine and how can I learn from you mm -hmm. um, and so like, there's a humility that comes with that kind of mm -hmm. that mentality um, and that's a lot that's a lot of the mentality that we'd like to try and help propagate on campus mm -hmm. and you guys have talked a lot about you know diversity in conversation making the time to understand other people but what would that actually look like on campus like is it getting people to talk to someone they wouldn't usually talk to is it bringing more diverse culture from other countries to campus? Like, what does it actually mean for the campus to actually be more diverse? Hmm. Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, it's important to acknowledge that there's the institutional administrative level mm -hmm. that we can inform and influence to a certain degree mm -hmm. because SJ is part of that bridge. Um, and I know that President Phipps is doing her best to, to really push for diversity mm -hmm. in, in uh, its own right. Mm -hmm. As for the student level, I think first and foremost, it starts with us, SGA, or, and all the other student leaders out there in the way we carry ourselves and approach those conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what good would it be to talk about diversity and um, organize events if we don't we aren't spending time with the people getting to know them mm -hmm. and I think like we mentioned this and during the debate night as well but one of the most important things I feel that comes with this role is the power it then gives the voices mm -hmm. to the voices of those who aren't necessarily uh, in the role of mm -hmm. being heard mm -hmm. um, to be able to represent for example myself not only the international community or the Malaysian community or the ethnically Chinese community, uh, but also um, 
the minority community. But like, for like I mentioned, the stories of my residents who are local, mm -hmm. who are American, and who are white. Um, those are stories that I carry with me now as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of it starts from us, us making sure that we are held uh, accountable and walking that walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we, we definitely want to look at it integrationally. Mm -hmm. How then can we supplement the way we are behaving and our attitude seeping into the events we organize mm -hmm. and um, looking for a club collaboration Mm -hmm. You know, exploring different um, avenues for collaboration between two clubs that on surface might have no reason to have anything to do with one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> no, you're good. You got good ideas. <laughs> um, but those ideas are from a lot of people we've talked to yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. It's not just our own. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just kind of moving, like going off of that as well, a lot of what we really want to try and do is make SJ an accessible. Mm -hmm. um, accessible organization and through um, social media through um, the idea of these town halls that we'd really mm -hmm. like to try and institute we want to help students recognize that they have a voice and they can be heard and mm -hmm. they don't have to be an executive position in a club mm -hmm. um, in order to be heard um, yeah mm -hmm. and okay you guys have like brought up a lot of student leadership and stuff like that and like are you trying to introduce more diverse voices into leadership, into SGA? Like, are, is that something you guys are consciously trying to do, especially with cabinet interviews right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we've definitely kept or are keeping in mind the demographics of the student body, mm -hmm. um, but then also um, the different perspectives that our, our each of our applicants bring mm -hmm. to the table. Um, and of course, we can only work with so much because we can only choose our we choose our cabinet from those who've applied. Mm -hmm, and right. so, if you haven't applied, then we can't. There's not much we can do mm -hmm. there, um, so but we are we are moving forward co with that in mind um, and trying to do the best of our ability mm -hmm. to kind of integrate those perspectives into the cabinet. And in terms of the larger student leadership um, population, I think coming back to being on the ground and interacting with the students mm -hmm. and making sure we are being intentional with our connections, I think through those connections. Um, it is well within our role to be recommending students, encouraging mm -hmm. students who are looking for things uh, or avenues for them to serve. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like connecting with the freshmen, sophomores who maybe are looking for more than just club activities mm -hmm. in terms of how they can serve their community and get involved. Um, I know, like for myself personally, getting to know like JC last year when I mm -hmm. came in. Um, her encourage, encouragement in, in terms of myself joining student senate and all mm -hmm. that helped a lot in just saying like, oh, there are these avenues, there are these opportunities beyond, mm -hmm. um, you know, different clubs. And so I think that will also have a large, like, role in playing mm -hmm. in terms of recommending diversity within student leadership mm -hmm. while balancing out merit and quality. Mm -hmm. And of these people who are applying, like, how do you guys deem who is a diverse voice for the student body? Like, how do you make that decision? We have a lot of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so I think it's important to acknowledge, one, there was the gender question that mm -hmm. came up. And so Jordan and I are particularly sensitive to that. When mm -hmm. we first came together, we recognized that we were two males. Mm -hmm. um, but as we also said during the debate, you know, you're going to have a cabinet that's comprising of five other people mm -hmm. and a total of seven. So I think that's where we can showcase that SGA is committed to diversity. Mm -hmm. And while the title says president and vice president, I personally view it as a team working together mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. each person playing an integral role. So. Um, like Jordan mentioned, we can only choose from a pool of applicants, mm -hmm. but um, asking, can, asking applicants how they feel about the platform, how do they feel about diversity, similar to some of the questions you're asking us mm -hmm. here tonight. Um, some of them we know personally, mm -hmm. and that helps in terms of the personal conversations we've had regarding these topics and their ideas on how they can help contribute 
to, to SGA. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of those factors will help us make a decision. And, you know, because we don't want to just do like, we, we don't want it to come across in any way that this person was elected as a token. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's, unfortunately, that happens a lot in the real world. But, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how do you guys think you are going to be able to introduce diversity as two men in leadership, especially for communities who are female, who are part of the LGBTQ community? who are not white or not Asian. Mm -hmm. mm. You want to go first? Sure, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, so as we mentioned before, a lot of this will come through um, who we elect as our cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, but then a lot, of, uh, a lot of introducing new perspectives comes from taking a step down and just being willing to listen and mm -hmm. to hear what people have to say. Um, and also giving them the opportunity to have their voice be heard through you. Mm -hmm. um, and then ideally, if we can institute uh, this town hall, we can have opportunities for students to have their voice be heard mm -hmm. on their own because every student here has a voice. It's our job to listen. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of, a lot of I, uh, the diversity that we want to incorporate and the perspectives we want to incorporate into our vision and what we do in SGA mm -hmm. is going to come from a lot of those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Like, it's definitely a lot. Um, we, we, we will just have to do a lot of our due diligence mm -hmm. in uh, educating ourselves in the areas that we are not as experienced in or, mm -hmm. you know, um, being a voice for those students. But like Jordan said, importantly, making sure that those students then can also be their own advocates. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, this will be something that it's like the culture that will be created will be like, not to say, well, hopefully self-sustaining, mm -hmm. but like, you know, it will, it will touch the people in a way that <coughs> they'll be able to say, yeah, you know, my perspective should be heard, but mm -hmm. so should yours. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Jordan and I have a lot of responsibility in mm -hmm. keeping up to date, having those connections. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I'm glad to be able to say that whenever I've had a question or I found myself not too familiar with certain things like mm -hmm. the LGBTQ uh, conversation or the perspective of what it is like to be a female or a female of color, you know, there's so many mm -hmm. different. I'm glad that I do have friends that I can then say, hey, you know, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences? Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to know more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because going along with that, we want to be held accountable. Mm -hmm. We want to be um, kept in check that and make sure, made sure that we're doing a good job of representing these students and these minorities and these demographics on campus. Um, we're passionate about this and we want to do it right. And we know that that means, we know, we know we'll mess up, but we want to, and we want, we want to ask the student body to help keep us in check and to help, help us grow and help us learn and help us do the best we can um, mm -hmm. as we serve them. Mm. And if you have, you know, people who are, that you guys talk to personally that are, you know, great in one-on-one -on -one conversation and you'd like them to be a spokesperson but they're scared because of discrimination they face, whether mm. on campus or outside of campus, how do you plan to, how do you, would you like to incorporate those voices mm. if they fear discrimination because they speak up because of differences? Mm. I think then it's how we decide to weave those experiences mm -hmm. into the intentional events uh, or conversations we have. And this could be done on a public student body level, like certain mm -hmm. events like civil discourse or the people we bring in to speak as panelists or mm -hmm. guest speakers um, to give their perspective that are mm -hmm. in line with some of those friends who are afraid, mm -hmm. but you know, coming with a place of more authority or age. Mm -hmm. or also the way we bring these discussions and topics up to like the board of trustees mm -hmm. or interacting with the higher level administration you know um, so that while we may not be able to make immediate changes on the ground mm -hmm. just the fact that you know the uh, administrative higher ups are aware and that you know these things are issues that occur for a lot of people um, so that they may in the future reflect on policy mm -hmm. Uh, just student handbook rules and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I think 
there are multiple ways to uh, kind of like tackle mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah, definitely. Because I don't think it's just as simple as, even though we are very passionate about these, these, mm -hmm. uh, type and t these types of topics and talking about these things on campus, we also recognize that we're not always the best people to be talking. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we need to just sit down and find someone else who's more educated, who comes from, who shares that per same perspective that mm -hmm. needs to be shared. I mean, th let them speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so if a, pers if a student is scared uh, because of uh, what discrimination they might face, that might be a legitimate fear. Um, and we want to do what we can to help support them and, do, and make them feel uh, strong enough to, to go out and speak. Mm -hmm. And we've you know, talked a lot about the LGBTQ community specifically. I know that one of the things you guys referenced during debate night was that you want to make this a more open campus, a safer campus for them. But what does that look like to you? What, mm -hmm. How are you going to make this a campus that's more accepting and safer for members of those community, some of whom have faced discrimination, such as having people report on them just simply because of their sexuality? Hmm. I think addressing the way we, now this is, this is going to be some interesting waters that we wade through here, mm -hmm. but on like a theological or ideological level, mm -hmm. um, we may have our beliefs on what is right and wrong, but I think people often forget that it is not our place to judge regardless. And I have spoken about this. I've asked some of my friends who are part of this community, mm -hmm. like in my own quest to be, like how do I be a good ally? How do I still love you as a friend? And the most common thing that they tell me is like, okay, we understand that you may not agree with whether it is right or wrong, mm -hmm. but you know, just hearing me and um, acknowledging me and accepting me as a person and loving me as your friend you know, and mm -hmm. saying like, that's how I'm going to stand by you. I think that's the most important thing that's often overlooked mm -hmm. because people immediately jump to the, oh, that's right or wrong. Or mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, they try to make it a legal issue. Mm -hmm. They try to make it so many different issues, but then we forget that, you know, especially on a Christian campus, mm -hmm. which I find sometimes ironic, we are called to love mm -hmm. first and foremost. And, you know, why judge someone else when some of the other sins that you might be committing is just as wrong in God's eyes? Like, mm -hmm. if, you know, if we're, if we're all sinners in God's eyes, then, like, who are we to say what is right or wrong when, or try to even, like, make one sin worse than the other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's having these type of conversations, not like a top-down what is right or wrong, black or white mm -hmm. approach, but rather saying, like, hey, you know, you're missing out a lot on these aspects of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And if you were to stop and consider, then you would be not so quick to discriminate or mm -hmm. report. You know, if you started having conversations with people who've had those experiences, if you started making friends with people from the LGBTQ plus community, then you wouldn't be so quick to dehumanize them and say like, no, what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that would come from just more education training for faculty and staff, mm -hmm. um, panels, discussions. Um, I think there was a chapel series like a year ago that really talked about a lot of these and it was very well received. Mm -hmm. It also had a lot of mixed reviews. Right. But still, that just meant that that was getting the conversation going. Mm -hmm. And I think it starts from there to create a culture of acceptance and civil dignity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think first, and, like I love what you touched on. Um, first and foremost, it's making sure to see everyone as human first, mm -hmm. uh, and recognizing that we are all human and we're all um, here, and we we have to coexist together. Mm -hmm. um, and there's beauty in our differences. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot we can learn from each other. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to also just like our conceptions of what is normal and mm -hmm. like the jokes we say, um, the language we use. Um, I think it'd be great if we could normalize conversation and education about uh, gender identity. Mm -hmm. Like, that's something that I haven't really been exposed to until I've sought to like learn and mm -hmm. teach myself. Um, and I think that's saying something if that's not really taught in the public education system. Right. Yeah.